100 years ago, painters, sculptors, writers and musicians battled for gold, silver and bronze at the Olympics. To mark a year until the Paris Games, we're looking at the artistic side of the world's biggest sporting event. We're in the heart of Paris. We're on the 26th of July, 2024. The opening ceremony will take place. We're promised a grandiose spectacle that will tell the story of Paris and of France. 600,000 spectators are expected to line the banks of the River Seine. And the well-known and highly acclaimed theatre director, Thomas Jolly, is the artistic director. It's the show of a lifetime. It's the biggest show in the world. But to be honest, the work offsets the pressure. There's so much to do. It's so amazing to create such a huge show that I'm more focused on the job. I can't deny, though, that on the day, a few minutes before the opening ceremony starts, like any actor or artist, I'll probably have stage fright. But other than that, I don't really feel the pressure. And it will be broadcast live around the world. For once, you're not creating a stage because the stage is the Seine. The Seine is here, and that's the brilliant idea of the Paris 2024 organizers to use it as a setting. It'll be the first time in the history of the Olympics that the opening ceremony won't take place in a sports stadium. From an artistic point of view, it means having the world's most beautiful city as a backdrop with the Seine River as a stage. And I have to compose with that. I'm very lucky, and I think that for this edition of the Olympics, it's a wonderful idea. How are you planning this to be a celebration of French culture? You'll be highlighting its diversity, I imagine? This idea of the Seine as a stage is even more relevant than it represents the history of France, the history of Paris. One can see it in the buildings, in the architecture. There's the history with a capital H, but also a lot of smaller stories, a lot of places with anecdotes. So, with my artistic team, we studied, visited, researched all this to find what could be incorporated in the show to tell the story of France, the story of Paris, a city where there are many ways of living together. A city which is made of influences from all over the world and which also influences the rest of the world. A city that carries a lot of symbols which will be glorified. Among the Olympic sports, there's a new one, breakdancing, or breaking as it's been called by the International Olympic Committee. Breaking competitions have been taking place all over the world since the 90s, popularizing the dance that began in urban hip hop communities. Here's Shirley Sitbon. To make it in the world of breaking, you need power, muscles, speed, flexibility, rhythm, and style. Here is one of the best known moves, the head spin explained by one of France's top breakers. I place my hands in front of me. I move them first, then I turn my head. Hands, head, body. When he has reached full speed, it's time to let go of his hands. Breakers make dozens of head spins per minute. Our champion ends on another iconic figure, the freeze. A battle is like a session of Q&A. I ask or tell you something, you reply. The dancer with the best structured statement, the neatest elaborated segment, wins the battle. We've established breaking as a sport, but it's also deeply rooted in art. It's linked to hip-hop music and culture. It all started in New York in the early 1970s and has dazzled and inspired people across the world. When we saw those images on television, we felt something different. These people move in an incredible way. They turn on their heads, their shoulders, their arms. We've come to this club because we want to learn how to do this. 
Some got the hang of it. For others, it was more complicated. Forty years later, the style that started on the streets of New York will get a place of honor in the Olympics. We b-boys started very far from this. Now we're joining athletes of all of these different sports. We feel others recognize our value now. The goal now is to attract new audiences, starting with young women, with an ultimate hope that the competition goes so well, breaking will remain an Olympic sport after Paris. A year before the start of the Games, the Olympic Forms Festival combines art and sport all summer long in the capital, as Leah McGuinn reports. This open-air fitness class invites the general public to work out. In an activity that combines dance and weight training. In the end, there's still a lot of people dancing, enjoying and sharing this moment. So it's cool. This contemporary dance company offers choreography for all ages. Parents, kids, everyone was into it. Summer is also a great opportunity to discover new venues, new areas to enjoy everything Paris and the suburbs have to offer. But it's not just about physical activity. The city of Paris, one year before the Olympic Games, wants to, above all, combine the worlds of culture and sport. The idea is to have the widest audience possible and to bring together the most traditional audience of these two worlds so that they unify around a common event, the Olympic and Paralympic Games. The public can also rediscover sports facilities like this one thanks to sound. In this gymnasium, 50 microphones are attached around the building. We're trying to make people hear the sounds of sport to which we don't normally have access. These are the somewhat intimate sounds of sport, and these are the sounds of the athletes' movements. There's a sensor here, and this plexiglass plate is actually going to make a membrane a little bit like a bass drum. Sporting movements are transformed into musical instruments. It's going to make a noise, and it's a noise that's very pleasing to the ear. Athletes and technicians make the whole building resonate in this immersive show. More than 50 free events will take place between now and mid-September. For Olympic champions, nutrition is synonymous with peak performance and well-being. In the capital of world gastronomy, it's Michelin star chefs who will be doing the cooking for the athletes. In her Parisian restaurant, Amandine Chagnot puts the finishing touches on a dish that will be served up at next year's Olympics. Here I have a guinea fowl that we cooked on low heat, so it's still quite pink and juicy. The chef was given free reign to come up with some 15 recipes for athletes. It's a big challenge because it's obviously symbolic. We represent France, our country, French know-how. Logistically, too, it's big because we're going to welcome huge crowds throughout the Games. North of Paris, construction is in full swing at the Olympic Village. In just a year's time, it will be home to 12,500 athletes who will need to be fed 24 hours a day. The goal is to feed all 12,500 athletes from 206 delegations from breakfast to dinner. So it's about offering catering that meets expectations so they can give their best performance. Another chef who's taken up the challenge is Marseille-based Alexandre Mazia, a former basketball player who now boasts three Michelin stars. The idea is to have something salty, but naturally salty. 
He's been working on his recipes for the past two years. Food is closely linked to performance and to well-being. It's an important factor. Mazia is also planning to bring his food truck to Paris, giving athletes the option of healthy street food. You can't underestimate the food truck. During lockdown, it made around 1,200 sales every day. There were nine of us working inside at the time. That won't be the case at the Olympics, but we can still do great things. Over a million meals will be served to athletes during the Olympics, around 40,000 each day. We'll leave you with an exhibition called Victories on at the National Museum of Sport in Nice in collaboration with the Paris Louvre. It's on until September. Thanks for watching. See you next time. France 24, every art form. Liberté, égalité, actualité.